YouTube. What's good, guys? It's your boy TD, and I'm back again with another live, guys. And this morning, the live is going to be on five players who makes me nervous in fantasy football in 2024. Also, guys, I got a great show. For Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, guys, I got a great show for you today. The show is going to be on uh, Stefan Diggs. I'm going to talk about him. I'm going to talk about Justin Jefferson. I'm going to talk about Rasheed Rice. And also, guys, I'm going to talk about some DSTs that you can be picking up this year when you start drafting that can have a great season. So, guys, thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This is Cutting Edge Content. Okay, so guys, let's begin this show. I'm going to start off with talking about Stefan Diggs. So I, and I already had a video on this, guys. Check that video out. It was a short video. I talked about him getting traded to the Texans, how I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, how I thought it was going to be good for the Texans. Now, for Buffalo, I also think it's going to be okay for them because they want to change up their staff. They can't win against the Kansas City Chiefs trying to be cute and pass the ball 40 times a game. They in Buffalo. They need to be running the ball and establishing the line of scrimmage. That's why I love James Cook value. And also, if they draft another running back, I like that guy too. Um, James Cook is not going to get 90% of the carries, but he will get 60 70% of the touches. That means catching the ball. Also, he, he's going to get more goal line opportunities this year. So I love James Cook value. They also going to be running double tight. Dolphin Kincaid value will be through the roof. So I really like that. Now, now, I believe that Josh Allen would be a better quarterback uh, far as in real life, not for fantasy purposes. So they're not going to let him throw the ball 40 times a game, every single game. They're going to try to make sure that he is taking care of the ball, not having so many turnovers. So I like uh, the move that they did with Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs want to be fed, so he needs to go to an offense where they throwing the ball 40 times a game. Okay, guys, let me make sure I get this. All right. There we go. Right. So um, going over to the Texans, guys, uh, a lot of you are nervous about Tank Dale. Don't be nervous about Tank Dale. Tank Dale has a special role. Uh, remember, guys, and I've been telling y'all this, for three to four years, you everybody want a player that's going to be hyper targeted, and you miss out on guys that don't have a great per se situation like that where they're going to get all the targets. They the only weapon. A lot of you would draft players. They said, "Well, we got one wide receiver, and it's going to be Tyreek Hill, and nobody else is getting any targets." All of you would try to draft that player number one overall, and that would be a bad uh, situation. You want a lot of a lot of weapons out there on the field. The thing is, you want to get guys who's going to be getting the touchdowns. Now, I don't believe Stephon Dix is going to be the touchdown guy. I believe he's going to get a, a, a good amount of targets. He's going to be good for PPR. The touchdown guy in the passing game, the receiver, is going to be Nico Collins. Tank Dell is going to be the deep threat. So I think Tank Dell can win you a, a week because he's going to get four or five catches. Two of them could be for 70 yards. Bombs. Stephon Diggs is going to get about seven or eight catches for 40, 50 yards. He might have a touchdown. He might not, but he's going to be getting a lot of targets. Nico is the guy who's going to be getting goal line opportunities as far as in the passing game because he is the 6'3", six, 6'4", six, jump ball wide receiver. So that's why you got to break it down and compartmentalize what's going to happen. You just don't fade a guy just because, oh, my God, there's five weapons over there. I don't care nothing about that. You – Guys, you want that because you can't double team. Now everybody's going to eat. Think about the Chicago Bulls when you got Scottie Pippen, you got Michael Jordan, you got Horace Grant, right? You you don't want Michael Jordan to be on the team by himself because now the team is going to funnel defense around him and he's going to have some bad games when it matters the most. So when you get into fantasy football playoffs, C.J. Stroud is still going to be willing to deal because nobody's going to get double teamed and your guys are going to have a good game. You know, Stephon Dick struggled late in the season every year in Buffalo because they would just double team him and nobody else could get open. 
So that's why I love the Houston Texans. I I, st- I like Tank Dell. I like Stephon Diggs. I, I like Nico Collins. You just got to draft him at the right ADP. Nico Collins is the only one I feel like his ADP should not change. I'm still drafting him in the late second round or the third round. I'm still drafting him there. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm not trying to be stubborn like I know everything. They're just my they're just my breakdown. I still think Nico Collins is a special wide receiver for this offense. That's just me. Uh, let's see here. Let me. I see you, Travis, in the house. Yes, sir. I see you, Aaron, always showing support. And Neil says, I feel you. You know, Neil says, I'm ready for fantasy, bro, bro. Yes, sir. Me too. Me too. Yes, sir. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about, about Stephon Diggs. Let's move on, guys, to Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Yes, guys, Justin Jefferson. So listen, this is what I want to say. And um, again, I'm going to give a shout out to one of my loyal subscribers, uh, Charlene. She gave me some advice. And guys, I, I'm very open to advice because I see fantasy football, I see sports different than most people. So sometimes I don't know certain content that y'all might need it might be very obvious to me and it may be very redundant to me but y'all might need it so always hit me up hey td what about this video td do this um i might you know it might help me out for us giving y'all some content that y'all need but this is what i want to say about justin jefferson because she was saying in the comment section she said td justin jefferson quarterback is not gonna be that good and i don't care how ta- how much talent you are if you ain't got a good quarterback you're not going to be to have be good in fantasy, and that's true. We talk, and that's true with the elites of the elites. Now, when we talking about a blanket statement, I'm not going to go to no Stephon Diggs over no Justin Jefferson just because he got C.J. Stroud. So what I'm saying is, no matter who the quarterback is for Justin Jefferson, the offensive coordinator is going to draw a plays. Does that mean he's going to be the number one overall wide receiver in fantasy? No, we don't need him to be. Now, that's why I advise you to take guys like Tyreek Hill in the first round, guys that can be, be that. But if I don't mind drafting Justin Jefferson at the 1-5 or the 1-4, because I know he's going to get hyper-targeted, and all of a sudden, in, a, in week 15, I'm in the uh, semifinals, Justin Jefferson goes off. It's not because he balled out every single week and he was the best wide receiver to ever touch the floor or touch the uh, football field. It's because he still he's going to be getting 12, 13 targets, and he's got that pedigree. Now, I'm not, I don't always go off targets, but at certain times with this type of player, it doesn't matter. And he always can get traded. So, guys, I'm don't get scared of Justin Jefferson. You still draft him at the right ADP. I'm not telling you to draft him over Tyreek Hill. I'm not telling you to draft him over Jamar Chase. I'm not telling you to draft him over CMC. I am, but I'm not even going to tell you to do that. It's up to you. Go down with your ship. But I'm still drafting Justin Jefferson. He's not going to fall to me, no one ten, one eleven. If I if I'm at the one ten and one eleven, 111, and I got this guy that I want to pick, and Justin Jefferson's there, I'm taking him. I, I, if I lose this fantasy season, I lose that fantasy season. I'm not trying to overthink this thing because if you look at the fantasy weeks throughout the season, guys boom, and we're like, well, 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 I thought his quarterback was struggling. And he had a backup. And well, how did he go off? Remember Jamar Chase went for three touchdowns with a backup quarterback with Jake Browning? Because you can't overthink it. You just got to go with the pedigree. So now when you come there, if you were trying to choose between Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and Tyreek Hill, then yeah, you, don't, you might say, well, Justin Jefferson lasts on that list because these guys got their quarterbacks. I get that. But I'm not drafting a third-round player over Justin Jefferson just because – he has a great situation. That just that just me. Let's see what the comments are saying. Uh, Big Will in the house. What's going on, brother? Always showing support. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Neil says, "What do you think about Josh Allen Buffalo offense?" I think I broke that down. Um, I think Josh Allen is going to be a gr- a good real life quarterback this year. I think he's going to probably throw for about thirty touchdowns and maybe two or three picks, and be very efficient. I think he could have a very efficient season like he had with Brian Dayball about three or four years ago. So I love Josh Allen in real life. Now, in fantasy, I think his value goes down. 
I think his value goes down in fantasy because he's not going to be throwing the ball 40 times a game, chunking it up to Stephon Diggs. They're going to be con- they're going to use ball control and they're going to be tougher. That team needs to get tougher. They in Buffalo. They got to be able to play in the cold weather and be tough. Yes, Jim Kelly then wasn't a tough team when they went to three Super Bowls and lost. But um, now, I mean, I just don't think you can. It, it's you putting too much on Josh Allen's shoulders to try to win every single game with throw the point, for the point, throw the point, for the point, throw the point, for the point, throw the point, for the point. Josh Allen, that's a lot on him. And sometimes he turned the ball over. And that's, and that, I'm okay with that. You see in the basketball, Luka Donich. Luka Donich is out there killing 35 points a game, 10 assists, nine rebounds. But you know what? They need somebody to take a little load off of him, pause. So you got to have Kyrie Irving sometimes and say, okay, watch out, Luke, I got this. There's too much pressure, even though you're great. Same thing with Michael Jordan. Same thing with Kobe. You got to have somebody to help them in certain situations. And so I believe it hurts his fantasy numbers, but it helps him be a better quarterback in real life to try to get a Super Bowl. So I think Josh Allen is going to have a good season. And I love James Cook. Yes, sir. I love James Cook. James Cook's going to ball out. Uh, Harambe says, sup, TD. Happy su- Saturday. Happy Saturday to you, bro, bro. Appreciate you always here showing support. Guys, make sure you hit the like button. Get, let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up. Martin Torres, what's up, bro, bro? Uh, Big Wheel says, Justin Jefferson went off on me. Pause. <laughs> In the playoff with Nick Mullins as quarterback. Elite is elite. I agree with that. I agree with that. Neil Fields says running backs are not the same. Trust me, trust them no more. Right. Right. Um, you don't trust any like uh, running backs are like girls when you're dating in like high school. You don't fall in love with them as soon as you go on a date with them. You got to get older, you got to get some experience, and then you can choose your wife. So that's how I treat running backs. That's I'm a zero, like a zero, I'm a zero uh girlfriend type guy. I'm a zero RB type guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you just gotta uh you a miss one next 15 minutes, one coming, like uh Gucci said. So I'm not worried about running backs. I'm moving on. I hey, if I I I I I'll be with you for a year, hey, I'm I'm gonna trade you next year. I don't I'm not worried about it. that's why I don't draft CMC. Not saying CMC ain't Margot Robbie, right? I'm just not going to marry, you know, where, oh, my God, I got the best running back. And then you get hurt, and then your feelings is hurt. You marry Margaret Robbie, and then she want to leave you for Brad Pitt, and then your feelings is hurt. So, to me, wide well, receivers are consistent wives. Like, like they don't, those are the people that you go down with the ship that you have on your team, and you draft them, and you count on them, especially in Dynasty. I want, I want good stud wide receivers, and I'm holding on to them. Like, Tyreek Hill is almost 30. I'm holding on to him. But if I got, like, a running back like Jonathan Taylor, who's 26, 27, I'm trading him. I don't want to get caught with that when he get a knee injury. Look at Nick Chubb. Look at Nick Chubb. Martin says, which player would be good for a six-round keeper for a standard lead? A six-round keeper, bruh, bruh? Um, I'm trying to think. Let me think. Let me think this through. Uh, guys that's in the, for the sixth round. I don't know, man. Give me some, give me some guys that you are trying to keep. I can't just name a guy out of nowhere. Give me a couple guys that you're trying to keep. Neil feels laughing. Big Wheel says, on the flip side, I had Drake London doing his rookie year with Mena, with Mariota as his quarterback, which didn't work out well for me. Right, right. Sometimes it don't work out. Um, I still like Drake London. I'm still holding on to Drake London and Dynasty. But, yeah, Mariota is just not the quarterback. Um, and he was spotty. Even though Drake London had some good weeks, he still was spotty with that type of quarterback. So I agree with that. Aaron says, hey, TD, will you be doing a mock draft tomorrow evening? Yes. I didn't do one last week, man. It was um, it was a holiday, and I was with the family, man. I was with the family. D-Line says, TD, what's popping? Damn, man, new cameras in our work trucks. I can't watch and drive no more. Ain't seen a video in a minute. You good, bro, bro? Keep grinding. Keep getting that money. Guys, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the like button. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's what I was saying about Justin Jefferson. Let's move on to Rasheed Rice. Let's move on to Rasheed Rice. So, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to go off 
I'm not going to be on fantasy football for a second or NFL. I'm going to talk about some real life stuff. That's what we do here at Fantasy Good Sports. Guys, don't be, and I'm, this is just my opinion. We all got opinions and we can say what we want to say about people, but I, I don't like people to be hypocrites and and also put the mirror in your face. Make you bet if you talk about this guy, you better not make mistakes. You better not have been speeding. You better not have smoked weed. You better have not been drinking. Because you gotta understand this guy's 21, 23 years old, worth a million dollars, and He's he's trying to enjoy life. Now, listen, I'm not making excuses for him. He has to take his medicine. So whatever happens, if he gets suspended for six games, that's on him. Um, if he loses money, that's on him. But I don't believe that we should vilify a guy for going out and trying to have a good time. Guys, when you got that, when you have that, imagine when you get paid on Fridays with a couple thousand dollars or whatever you make. Look how you feel. So imagine when you are a young person and you got this type of money, you're going to make mistakes. You're going, you're going, you're not thinking clear. He's a young guy. We have to give our young men opportunity. Well, we got to give them grace to make mistakes. So don't judge these guys. And be like, is he dumb? What is wrong with him? He's growing his life. Well, what have you did in your life? We, but hey, you better not. But hey, they better not come out and talk about what you did. You better not come back and talk about what you did because we already made mistakes. Um, so that's the first time. So I'm not really worried about what's going to happen with Rashid Rice. I, hopefully nobody got hurt. Nothing happened like the Henry Ruggs situation. So hopefully he learns from this. Now, repeated offenses is different. When you start doing the same thing over and over, that's the that's the IQ of a, of a baby. Right? That's a very low IQ when you keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, even sometimes like addiction is different, but most of the time, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, that's, that's low IQ. That's dumb. So let's talk about far as like football, what its value is. If you have them on a dynasty team, I say, hold on to them because that's the only way the value going to go up. When you hear something about a stock and say somebody stole some money or whatever may happen and everybody's trying to sell the stock, you're not going to be able to get any money for it. So you hold on to it until everything's regroups um, and and goes back up, right? So let's give you let me give you an example. You remember when Elon Musk went on the Joe Rogan podcast and he smoked weed and Tesla fell down like a lot of shares. A lot of people, oh my god, a lot of people sold it. They was there, ah oh, man, don't nobody want that no more. He's smoking weed and look at that share and then look at what Tesla's doing now. So you held the hell. You, if you held on to it, you got your value back and plus more. So that's what I believe about with she writes. Go buy low on them. Somebody don't want them. Go give a third or fourth round pick for them in dynasty. Um, in redraft, I wouldn't necessarily touch them to like a late round because redraft is a lot different. You got to win right now. But in dynasty, I'm definitely taking this guy and I'm holding on to him. He's going to be OK. He's going to be OK. Nobody got nobody died. It was just weed. He could he probably, he could get suspended, but it's not going to be forever. Um, so I will hold on to him. But like I said, guys, ha have grace for these guys. Don't judge these guys. Don't talk about their money. Don't be in their pockets like that. I know we all want to, you know, we wish we was making that type of money. No pun intended, right? So don't try to don't be a hater. We all got, we got kids. They're going to make mistakes. Our brothers and sisters are made mistakes. We have made mistakes. So just kind of have that type of grace, right? He ain't tried to, he ain't did a hate crime where he hate a certain race of people or he killed somebody or he uh, essayed somebody, a lady or something like that. He haven't did anything like that. So that that's different. So just give this guy, he's a young man. All right, let's, let's read through a couple of these comments. He says, I hear you, bro. Family is important. Yes, sir. It is. It is. That's the only reason why I didn't do the mock draft. Um, I was with the fam. It was Easter. And it says, Austin Eckler, Tank Dale, Zamir White, Marvin Mills Jr., just to name a few, are good picks for the sixth round. Yeah. Um, just to say for the sixth round, man, you got to understand, you can't, if you go out, if you come in with this template, bro, it, it limits you. You don't never know who's going to be there or what type of players are available. So I don't know. Those are good guys, all good guys to keep. 
but it just depends on like your lead and, how, and your scoring settings. Like to me, in some super flex leagues, I'm not high on quarterbacks because they don't score a lot of points. Now, if you turn up the scoring for a quarterback, yes, they high value. If they score 40, 50 points in good games, yeah. But if they only score 25, 26 points on a good week, I don't think they're that valuable. So it just depends on your league, man. Um, but those are good guys. Those are fine guys. But don't be set on ADP. Do not be set on a oh Austin Eckler six round. I gotta get him. Bruh, uh Nico Collins was out there when you took Austin Eckler over Nico. Like you gotta understand, sometimes guys fall. Uh Travis Kelts could be in the six round. I don't know. It just depends on your league, man. Uh Jerry, what's going on, Jerry? So do you trust Chase to perform as a top three wide receiver? That's a great question. Yes and no. Guys, let's get the likes up. Hit the like button. Yes and no. I, I'm 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 drafting Chase this year. Am I'm nervous? I am a little bit. I like Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow is elite. I think Chase is elite. It it doesn't seem like Houston offense. Houston offense seems like they got they got a lot of good weapons. Excuse me. To me, it seems like they got Jamar Chase, and that's it. T. Higgins is good. I just, it's just, I'm a little worried about it. Now, he's not on this five players that make me nervous, but he does, I got to admit, man, he does make me nervous a little bit, but I'm still willing to draft him. I'm still willing to draft him. I actually, man, to be honest with you, I feel safer with Justin Jefferson than I do with Jamar Chase, and I know that may sound crazy. That's just my two cents on it. That's just my two, two cents on it, Jerry. Harambe says Austin Eckler ain't last until the six, in my opinion. It just depends, man. He could last. It just depends on what league you're in. It, it depends on what league you're in. I've seen players get dropped down two or three rounds. I've seen players go in the first round that don't supposed to. It just depends on, on your league. Aaron says, Alan Harambe, what round do you think he will be taking at the most? Harambe says, in my opinion, in PPR or half PPR, maybe late fourth, half, or early fifth. The OC will utilize his skill set. I agree with that. I agree with that. But remember, he's a running back. So, you know, if you're taking him as your RB3 or your flex play, I think that's a great time to draft. You got to worry about your team. It's not about um, ADP. Because you, you will have an ADP team, and then your ADP team, you want to while guys are booming past your ADP team. Because you got guys, you took them at the what everybody said, what round to take them. You got to go get your guys that you think is good. I took Amara in the first round. Everybody was saying he's a second round pick. I took him in the first round. It wasn't about ADP. Now, you know, you got to be, I do respect ADP, but I'm not going to let ADP be my deciding factor. If you think Austin Eckler is going to ball out, sure, he might be worth to take in the third round. If you really think he's going to be that type of player, but if you don't, then it might be good to take him in the fifth, sixth round. It just depends on. Okay. So, guys, let's uh, – let me see if there's any news out here that I need to talk about. Guys, make sure you hit the like button. Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up. Appreciate everybody being here. Let me go look and see if there's any news that we need to be talking about that I haven't mentioned. Okay. Let's see here. Is anything that I think is worth. They said that Deshaun Watson should be ready week one. That's good. I think he's a sleeper. Deshaun Watson is a sleeper this year. For the value that you can get him. I don't think this guy forgot how to play. I think this guy can still play. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it, guys. I don't think I really have. Guys, this Clyde, CEH got re-signed by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. They, j I mean, I'm not mad at them. I, who can say they champions? But, wow, that, that's surprising. I thought they would let them walk. They still might release them, depending on how everybody doing um in the summer. Okay, okay, let's see. Ezekiel Elliott could re reunite with the Dallas Cowboys. I think that's good. I think they will draft a rookie, but 
I think um, Zeke Elliott will be good for them. Be a great veteran for the team. Okay, that's about it. All right. So, guys, let's get on to this DST talk. Let's get on to this DST talk. Before we get on, let me read some of these comments out. He said, yeah, if you like go three wide receivers and add Eckler as an RB, I'd be happy with that. Yes, Arambi, I agree 100% with that. I'd, I'd rather look at it that way than to look at it as an ADP. Because some that's I like the way he's looking at it. I'm not saying that's the only way to look at it. And I'm not saying you wrong to draft Eckler or hold on or keep him as a keeper, but I like the way he's saying it. Me, I'm I'm a zero RB guy, so I'm biased when it comes to a running back. Aaron says, don't focus on ADP. Just get your guys, as you said, right, right, right. But ADP is just to keep you in, to make sure you're going, you, it's like coloring, coloring. Make sure you don't color outside the lines. Color as you want, just don't go outside the lines. That's what ADP is for. You don't want to draft um, Tank Dale in round one just because you believe in Tank Dale when you could have waited to round three or four to get him. That's the, that's the thing. Harami says, I agree with that point, Aaron. Siobhan, what's going on with your girl? Long time no see. She says, can you please do a video about the type of offenses you think teams will learn more? lean more into run offense or pass offense and why it would be helpful when making selections in fantasy football. Okay. Can you please do a video on about the type of offenses you think teams lean more into the run or the pass? Okay. Yeah, I will. I will definitely do that. Yeah. Because that, I think that does help. There are some teams that's, but you know, everybody passes a lot, but there are some teams, I, the way I would break it down it's teams that's going to give their running backs the goal line opportunities to score and teams who's looking to pass. Like I would say the Rams are looking to pass the ball on the goal line, where the Baltimore Ravens are looking to run the ball on the goal line. But as far as passing, most of the t league is more of a 60% pass, 40% run. Nobody's doing a 60% run anymore. Rarely you finding that. Yep. Anytime, Siobhan. Okay. So, guys, let's get the likes up. Let's keep hitting that like button. Share the content. Share the content. Let's go. Okay. So, let's talk about DSTs. The first DST I want to talk about is the Green Bay Packers. Guys, they got a young squad. This team is a, it's another team that I'm going to talk about, too. That I believe they are young teams, and they ready to go and win a Super Bowl. They have a, they have a chance to win a Super Bowl. Uh, they got Jari Alexander, Quay Walker, uh, Rashad Gary, uh, Wynn. They got a lot of guys that are early round draft picks that are in their second and third years, and they should have a breakout season this year. So I like the Green Bay Packers defense. I think they're going to be better. Better. They got rid of Joe Barry. Joe Barry, to me, wasn't calling the right type of defense. Um, so I like the Green Bay Packers this year. So if you want to wait late, to get these guys, I don't think they're going to be going early as in like most DST, like top DSTs. So I like the Green Bay Packers. I just want to talk about them. Next one is this is very sneaky. This is a big time sleeper defense. Nobody was on them and they played really good all year. That's why this guy got a head coaching job. Raheem Mo Morris, he got a head coaching job for the Atlanta Falcons. It's because of what he did with the Rams. The Rams had no stars. They had really good, they had great, a great nucleus of players playing together with rookies and second and third year players and, and players that nobody else heard about. So I like the Rams. I think that's a sneaky, sneaky defense. That's a defense where you can get, you don't have to draft a defense and you can pick them up off the waivers after the draft is over for redraft. Um, now they had a guy like Michael Hort. Um, I thought he was a like an ironic, real unique player. He's 310 pounds and plays outside linebacker and drop back and pass zones. 310 pounds dropping back in pass zone, pass zones. Um, they running a combo defense where they run a three four with a little bit of four three. Um, this defense is gonna be sneaky good. Now, Raheem Morris is not the uh, the head coach or the defensive coordinator there anymore, but I think they still gonna be good. So be be looking out for the Rams. Sneaky defense. Go look at the stats. They were top 10. They did really good against some teams that they, that posed a ran up, run up uh. Pozo went up and down the field on them uh, the whole game, and they stopped them. 
They stopped them. So I like the Rams. Going on to the Detroit Lions. Then look, the Detroit Lions secondary was terrible last year. It was terrible. But I believe that they're going to get some corners and some safeties, and they're going to be really good this year. All they need is corners and safeties. That their, their defensive line is good. The linebackers is good. They need a couple corners and a safety. And I think once they get that, I think this team is going to be elite. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson is the elite pass rusher. Now, he listen, he's not going to be – I don't think he's a 20-sack guy, but I think he plays the run just as good as any defensive lineman in the game. And I think he rushes the pass as, as a top – like a top 10 guy, which that's all you need to be is a top 10 guy. All you need is about 12 sacks a year. You are an elite pass rusher. You don't have to get 18 and 19, especially when you play the run. So he reminds me kind of like a Max Crosby type. Um, so I, I love uh, the Detroit Lions. I like that defense this year. I like that team. This is a sneaky team that's ready for a Super Bowl run. Uh, moving on to the Steelers. This is a juggernaut. They got a young corner who's probably the best corner in the game to me because he's so physical uh, with Joy Porter Jr. Um, they got T.J. Watt. Probably got two more years left in his pure prime. Um, they got um, – they got elite safeties. Uh, they got they got elite defensive linemen like Cam, Cameron Hayward. I think this team still is going to be probably the top three defenses in the league. Moving on to the Baltimore Ravens, you already know what they are. Kyle Hamilton is a monster. He can play in the box as a linebacker, and he can cover tight ends, and he can play back deep. This guy, he's a hybrid. I've been telling y'all about hybrids for what? Over 10 I mean, I said 10. I actually, I have been talking about high bridge for 10 years. This is before I even knew about YouTube. But I, guys, I've been on high bridge ever since I started my channel. People get, feel some type of way when I talk about high bridge and I've been on this and I've been on this. And that, well, that's why your channel ain't growing. And, and you, you act like you know everything. They say that stuff all the time. But I've been on this stuff. I've been talking about a Kyle Hamilton where you need a guy who can play linebacker. Guys, Got linebackers like Roquan Smith is not going to be in the game for long. You're going 210, 215 pounds. That's what the type of linebackers you're going to need. Just look at this uh, NBA. You don't need seven footers anymore. Now, listen, you will have a Joel LMB or or Jokovic. Those type of guys will still come through. Like a Roquan Smith, he's special. But usually you're going to want a guy about six eight who can guard any position, who can switch. Same thing on with with uh, defense. You want a middle linebacker who can cover tight ends, cover wide receivers, play the run, a guy who can be out in space. The game is going to be out in space, guys. Let me tell you, I'm giving y'all cutting edge content right here. So listen, guys, go watch a peewee game, go watch a 12 and under game, go watch a high school game, go watch a college game, go watch a pro game. The first play of the game is a screen. Can yo, my best wide receiver, Malik Neighbors, can your thoughts Gardner stop him when he catch the ball on the little screen? I'm not trying to drop my quarterback back like he's C.J. Stroud or Pat Mahomes and hit somebody with an 80-yard bomb. Yeah, you can do that when you have that elite quarterback, but if you don't have that elite quarterback, you want to get the ball out quick and let and let your guys try to out-juke the linebackers and stuff. So you got to have linebackers who can run and tackle these quick guys like Tyreek Hill. So that's why I believe got Kyle Hamilton – and those type of safeties and linebackers are going to be elite in the game. Quay Walker for the Green Bay Packers, he's that type of guy. He can cover out in space. He can guard uh, tight ends. So I love Baltimore's defense. I think they're going to be elite again. And last but not least, guys, another defense I want to talk about is the Oakland Raiders. Antonio Pierce, phenomenal job, man. Antonio Pierce had a phenomenal, did a phenomenal job this year. He um, That defense was good. They got some young corners who play man to man up in your face, bump and run, cover three, a little, little bit of the cover three scheme, and they they running and tackling. And you have a great uh, pass rusher and defensive player like Max Crosby who can win defensive player of the year. This guy won't miss a game. This guy led. He could he his knee was about. I mean, he should have stayed out of the game. But long story short, uh, he was he should have missed a couple games, but he would not come out the game. This is an old school mentality football player. Now he might not have a long career because he's playing through injuries, but um, that's the type of football players that we want to see. And this, and it takes on the mentality of the coach like Antonio Pierce. So I believe the Raiders are going to be a sneaky, really good defense and a really good team this year. They're going to hit you in the mouth. That's why I love Zamir White. Pause. Zamir White going to get 
probably be a top five guy lead, leading carries in the NFL this year. And he'd probably get another, they'd probably bring in another running back to get a few carries here and there. Uh, whoever the quarterback is going to do a lot of play action and try to hit Devontae Adams and other wide receivers on crosses. This is going to be a, a, a hit-you-in-the-mouth team. That's why I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to struggle against the Raiders. Like, a lot of teams are going to struggle against the Raiders because they're going to be tough. They're not going to play that finesse game. So going to earlier what Siobhan was talking about, this is a team that's going to run the ball probably 60 to 70% of the time. That's one of those teams where the running back, you want to get this running back. So those are the defense. Those, those are some DSTs that I really like. Let me see what the, the chat talking about. Jerry says, if the Bills take a wide receiver in the first, could that wide receiver be the number two wide receiver in the rookie drafts? Yes. Um, I would take him, but don't think that he's going to get a lot of targets. He may, I, 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 I would say he could get seven, 800 yards at the most. I don't think this team is going to throw the ball around a lot anymore. I think Josh Allen passing attempts is going to go down probably by like 100 attempts, maybe 150. So I would still take that wide receiver in the first round in a rookie startup draft, but don't get caught up. Oh, my God, it's the number two. They ain't got no wide receiver. So he's going to boom. He's going to have a Justin Jefferson season. He could. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on it. I want to bank on it. Dollar Bill says Texas defense, bruh, bruh. Yes, sir. And I, bruh, bruh, you're right. I left that one off. That was the one, bruh, bruh, thank you. I, I was reading, I'm like, where is another one? Bruh, bruh, I agree 100%. Shout out to Dollar Bill, guys. That boy, he's on his stuff. That is going to be a great defense this year. That coach is right. The Texans is going to be good. Facts. Facts. I love the Texas defense. You got Anderson. Um, who else you got on that defense? They got a they got a they got a, a, a good young crew. Um, I, I don't know a lot of the guys on that defense, but I know they had some breakout seasons. A couple guys hit ten sacks. So yes, I agree with the Texas defense. Harami says Green Bay my Super Bowl pick for the NFC this year. I like that. Jordan Love, yes sir. Guys, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. This is cutting edge content. Harambe says Pittsburgh, Indy, Houston, Las Vegas going to be good fantasy defenses. I don't know about Indy. They don't got no pass rushers. I need to see a pass rusher. If they draft a pass rusher or they trade for one, then I say something else. They got to have you got to have somebody who can get to the quarterback. That's the name of the game. And guys, I want to tell you, I'm gonna give you a little caveat. This is probably gonna be the highest scoring year in in, in football ever. Quarterbacks are going to put up crazy numbers. Guys, it's, it's going to be because the game is changing. This is an offensive league. You're not going to be see games in the teams 14 to 8, uh, 19, and 21 to 17. You're going to see 28, 24, 32, 28. This is going to probably be the most points ever scored in the history of NFL football. So defenses are going to be, it's about getting turnovers. So you the way you play, you ain't you don't put no safeties out there knocking people's heads off. You got to get pass rushers who can get to the quarterback on third down. If it's 39, you can get to the quarterback. Third and four is kind of hard to get to the quarterback there. But when, when they do get you down, when you behind the chains, you need to have Max Crosby's and Michael Parsons. That's that's what the game is played. So I need to see Indy, in my opinion. And just my opinion, I need to see them get some pass rushers. But I do. I love uh, 90 percent of those teams. CHB in the middle. He says Packers defense going to eat. I agree with that. They got some studs. I was shot Gary one year off that um, ACL injury. Um, so he this will be his second year. I think he's going to be good coming off the ACL injury. He's a he's a beast. CHB says dollar, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Uh, Derek Stingley, there you go. Dave, thank you, Bubba. Derek Stingley, yes. The, uh, guys, go, and I hate to even tell you to go do this, go watch about his father, what happened with his father. His father got paralyzed. Well, his uncle. I think that's his uncle or uh, not, not his father. I think it's his uncle or his great uncle. But, yeah, Stingley Jr., was. He, uh, he's like that. 
He's like that, guys. He's a sh he's going to be on his way for a shutdown corner. Daniel Hunter coming from the Minnesota Vikings can get you the pass rush. They got a good team, man, and I love their coach. And I love their coach. One of the best coaches in the league. As a defense, it's hard to be a defensive coordinator and then make your quarter help your quarterback get better. It's usually you don't see that. Yep, on the Texas defense, right? Harami says Hunter and Anderson are going to be going to destroy. I agree. Big Wheel says, with the new kickoff rules, what team do you think would be good special team players, dad or boom? I think she, uh, Shahi is going to be one for the New Orleans Saints. Um, I think Kansas City is going to have one, just because I know Andy Reid. I think Broncos with Marvin Mims are going to be good, and that's all I got for her right now. But Marvin Mims and Rasheed Shahi, definitely. Definitely. The Saints and uh, the um, Denver Broncos. And CHB says, look out for the Lucas Van Ness dude. He's going to be a problem on the Packers defense. Yeah, he's a guy, too. He's a guy, too. Young, young early round draft pick. Yep. Make sure you hit the like button, guys. Subscribe to the show. This is Cutting Edge content. Harambe says, Chargers would have a good special teams, too. Okay. So, guys, now let's get to the honey. Yes, sir. Let's get to the honey. These are five players that makes me nervous. Now, listen, I got some bonus guys for you, too, so make sure you stay here for the whole live. Yeah, make sure you stay here for the whole live. Okay. So the first guy is going to be A.J. Brown, new brother in town. A.J. Brown. AJ Brown, new brother in town. Yeah, AJ Brown. Listen, I love AJ Brown. He's he's a, he's on his way to be a Hall of Famer. I was one of the first guys that talked about AJ Brown as a rookie that I said that he was going to be a great wide receiver. Everybody, I, well, I don't know, man. I need to see it first, and I don't know, man. He don't get enough targets, and and there's only a few targets because Derrick Henry's on that. I've told people that my, his whole career. Now, he's getting older, and the guy's like 215, 220, probably like 220. His knees, he every about three games a season, man, he had problems because he's just a big dude. He's a, he's, a, he's a phenom. And I don't believe in order for this offense to be better, I don't think they're going to throw the ball as much as they did last year. I think they're going. this is going to be a Saquon Barkley team. Um, And I don't think they're going to throw the ball – I don't think A.J. Brown is going to have as many as targets. I still think he's a top 12 wide receiver, but not top three wide receiver. Will he be top th three wide receivers for certain parts of the season, for certain quadrants? Yes. But when it come down to it and you ready, you want to see that boom like a Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Amara, I believe that with his age and his nutrition, I believe that he's going to he's gonna uh, lack in those areas. So I don't want y'all to draft. Oh, I got a number one wide receiver. Yeah, you draft him. He could be your number one wide receiver, but know what he know what he is. Know that if you get AJ Brown, you probably need an armor raw. You need another elite wide receiver. Don't think AJ Brown is going to win you a championship like a Tyreek Hill, where he's going for thirty point, forty points every single game. I don't believe that's what's going to happen this year. They they not going to him and Jalen Hurts are not going to be arguing on the sideline. They probably going the coaches going to pull in him and Jalen Hurts to listen. AJ, we're going to get targets, but we're not having this shit like we had last year where you think you're going, oh, oh man, I, I better get some targets. We, we winning games. We trying to win a Super Bowl. We don't care how we win. We just want to win. So don't be looking to get a certain amount of targets every game. But now we, on third down, we're going to look for you. So I think I need to lower your expectations on AJ Brown. He makes me nervous as far as being a top three. You, you would draft him to be a top three wide receiver. You would draft him to be what? It'd be Tyreek Hill, uh, Jamar Chase, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, somewhere around. you would, But I think he's going to be outside the top five when it comes to it. But I think he's going to be solid for you. I think he's going to get you 13, 14 fantasy points a game, but not 18, 19. Guys, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. This is Cutting Edge co Content. Uh, moving on to the next guy. And it's, it's another wide receiver, and it's Mike Evans. 
is Mike Evans. So listen, guys, Tampa Bay got a good team. Baker Mayfield is going to be passing the ball. I think they're going to be they're going to run the ball a little bit more than they did last year. But I still think Mike Evans is a good wide receiver. But I don't think he's going to be top five this year. I, he, could he be outside the top twelve? Yes, I think Chris Godwin takes takes more of a role, and they just let Mike Evans be a touchdown maker. If Mike Evans can get ten touchdowns this year, then he could be a top twelve guy easily. Um, that's the only way, way that he could be a top twelve to meet his ADP value. But if you get him at the right ADP, I think this is a steal. I think if you get Mike Evans as a wide receiver two, I think he's a great wide receiver. If you get him as a wide receiver one, I think you need to be careful with that. I think that makes me nervous for him being my wide receiver one. He's older. He's 30-some years old. He can still play, but you got to understand, these guys getting a lot of targets at that age, it's just it's not good. It's just not good. Um, but I, I still think he's a good draft pick, but to be top tw 12, top seven, I don't know. I think he could be top 15, top 16 this year. All right. Moving on. Guys, I want you to spam the chat right now. Let me know who's who's going to be your top. Who's who's the guy that makes you nervous? I see some of the comments now. Who makes you nervous in football? Who makes you nervous? Other than that, guys, put, spam the chat. Put the 100 symbol. It helps the algorithm out. So if you're still here watching the live, let me know that you're still watching. Put the 100 symbol. But also, I would love to know who makes you nervous. Okay. So um, the next guy is going to be Debo Samuel. Yes, guys, Debo Samuel. I thought they would probably trade Debo Samuel this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Now, listen, Debo can play, but he's always going to be injured, injured the way he plays the game. Some guy, Same thing with A.J. Brown. Some guys play the game so physical that they're always going to be nicked up. And that's the way uh, Debo is. Now, listen, when Debo is healthy, he's elite. He's elite when he's healthy. So I think you um I think guys the Debo will be a top 24 wide receiver this year. I think he will have times where he could be the number one or number two wide receiver on the week because the way he plays the game, where he can have one rushing touchdown for 30, 40 yards, and then he could catch a bomb for 70. But do do I think he stays healthy the whole season and be there for you every single week? No. And we don't need receivers to do that every single week but i just want, want i don't want y'all to draft him, him in the second round and he missed four or five games for you and you kind of be up ah debo let me down no i don't think he let you down you got to know what debo is i think debo is a great number two number three wide receiver i don't think you put him you i don't think you let him be his your alpha on his team okay so let's move on. Uh, my next guy is a quarterback, and it's going to be Justin Herbert from the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. And the reason why I believe Justin Herbert, it, it makes me a little nervous, guys, is because his coach, this is going to be a run predominantly team. This team is going to be running the ball 60% of the time. J Justin Herbert targets uh well his attempts passing attempts are going to go down by 150 to 200. That's why they bought in Jim Harbaugh because they was like us trying to throw the ball around and throw it 50 times a game is not how we're going to win games here. We got to win the game. We got to help Justin Herbert out. If not, he's going to be nicked up and he's going to be ha turning the ball over a lot. Same thing is going on with Josh Allen. So I believe that Justin Herbert guys is going to be a great uh, quarterback rating quarterback, like in real life. I think he's, he's going to be high percentage, 70% completion percentage, that type of stuff. Not 38 passing attempts, five touchdowns. I think he, gonna, he could give you two touchdowns a game, and that's good for him. Now, I think he's going to be good for you in the fantasy football playoffs because I think this team is going to be hitting on all ceilings, and you're going to have to stop this run game, and he's going to be having one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with some of his weapons. It's like Khalid Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., whoever they get. So be careful about – don't draft Justin Herbert and be like, oh, my God, this guy could be a potential top three. He's not going to be top three because he's not going to have enough passing attempts. 
I think the guys who's going to be throwing the ball a lot this year is going to be guys like Jordan Love, the young guys who got teams that's built around that. Justin Herbert team is not built to throw it a bunch. That's why they got rid of Keaton Allen. They was going to throw it 40 times a game. They was going to keep Keaton Allen. So let's move on. My next guy that makes me a little bit nervous is going to be Stephon Diggs. People don't draft Stephon Diggs to be the number one wide receiver in Houston. Draft him to be, I would say, a wide receiver two flex play. And I know what people say, well, he's not going to last there. Well, so we'll let somebody else have that problem. I'm not saying Stephon Diggs suck, but I'm not drafting him to be some type of, oh, my God, I got Stephon Diggs. I got five. Oh, well, not five. But I got four elite wide receivers on my team. No, Stephon Diggs is elite as in his ability. But for us in fantasy purposes, he's not going to be that type of guy. He's going to get hyper targeted, but they they going they going the Nico Collins is the is going to be the fantasy output guy on this team, not uh, Stephon Diggs. Now Stephon Diggs is going to get PPR targets, and he's going to have weeks where he do be the number one guy. But if you ask me, out of seventeen weeks, who's going to have the most? Uh, who's going to be the number one wide receiver the most on that team? It's going to be Nico. And then Tank Dell is going to be very sneaky because he's going to be getting one on one coverage and get behind a defense and having these 70-yard touchdown bombs, which people are going to want that. Stephon Diggs is going to be the guy who they go to on third down. They got him in the slot. Boom, boom, he beat the slot corner. Bam, first down. So he, he can have easily six catches for 50, 60 yards um, and four or five first downs. That's what it's going to be. When they, when, they, when, they get, when the money is on the line, they're going to Stephon Diggs. Not for touchdowns, but for first downs. But when they trying to score, they're gonna go to Nico with that jump ball ability. He was he had more tar. I think he led, he was second in targets outside of DK Metcalf for green zone targets as a wide receiver, Nico Collins. Tank Dell had the best um as far as in PFF, he had the best um separation in deep routes as far as getting open. Tank Dell's a special going deep. Stefan Diggs is not really a deep wide receiver. He just he's a great route runner, intermediate wide receiver, where he's running the, those the in the deep in routes and the and the deep comebacks. That's what Stephon Diggs do that's great. And that's what he's gonna do on third down for the Houston Texans. A great experienced wide receiver where they can't double Nico and Tank Dell's a smaller guy. So uh uh so Stephon gonna be able to help him out and be healthy. And maybe Tank Dell might miss a couple games because of his stature. All right. So let's go on, guys. Uh, make sure you spam the chat. Put the 100 in the, uh, in the chat, guys. Let me know that you're still here. Hit the like button. Okay. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. My next guy is a running back. And it's going to be Nick Chubb. I know this is obvious, but a lot of you drafting Nick Chubb and think you're getting a value. I would say, I'm going to say that Nick Chubb, I would fade him completely this year. Off that knee injury, I don't see him coming back and being a top 12 of anything. Now, if you can get him as in the ninth, 10th round, as a guy that you could put on your bench and see what happens, do it. But if you get him and you need him to start, it could derail your season. So to me, I'm fading Nick Chubb completely this year. That's just me. Now, if you want to pick him, I'm not telling anybody what to do. But if you want to pick him, you can do it. Me, I'm fading him. I'm fading him. So that's all I got to say about Nick Chubb. You see, we know he got a knee injury. I don't, don't, that's what a lot of you love. The, you still running back eccentric. The game has changed. Trying to get the best running back is not the way you win fantasy leagues this, this year or going forward. You got to try to get the best wide receiver and the best quarterback. If you go look, who's scoring the most is quarterbacks and uh, wide receivers. So if you can get a top three quarterback and a top three wide receiver, you go into the playoffs and you're probably going to win your league. You got a chance to win your league. If you got the top five running back, 
you can still lose. Reason why is he gonna be healthy for you every single game? CMC did it this year. That's why that he's CMC is an outlier. He's special. I'm not. I ain't got nothing bad to say about CMC. If you want to draft CMC, you do it. But I'm not trying to look for a CMC every year. Oh, I, I got the CMC. He's going to be healthy for all 17 weeks and win me a championship. I'm not playing that game. But I feel good. With, I can find me a Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill. A Amara St. Brown. All right, last but not least is Josh Allen. And I already told you the reason why I said that Josh Allen Earlier, while I believe Josh Allen is not going to have the same fantasy output. They they trying to win championships. This is going to be a double tight end, hit you in the mouth team in the cold weather. They got to do that. They in Buffalo. Why are they trying to get cute in Buffalo? Now, I know years ago with Jim Kelly, they did that. But I believe that they need to be tough. And I believe that's why I love James Cook. And I think Josh Allen and, uh, is going to have a good regular season. Like he can win the MVP, not like a Lamar Jackson. You know, Lamar Jackson didn't have no 40 touchdowns. 40 touchdowns, 50 touchdowns. Lamar had like 28 touchdowns, but he was efficient. And that's what Josh Allen is trying to do this year. He ain't trying to be throw for 40 tubs. He's trying to throw for about 32 tubs and about five turnovers. Okay. So let's go. Let's go. Let's get to the chat. Let's go through some of these and guys, we're going to get out of here. Cosby says, Lamar Jackson makes me nervous. <laughs> so, bro, bro I, I get that. I understand it. But, bro, this is what I tell you from last year. Lamar Jackson, no, he's not. So, out, outside of C.J. Stroud and Jordan Love, and I'm thinking, let me think about some more quarterbacks, and Matthew Stafford, what guys are throwing the ball for 40 times a game and, try, and winning and winning you weeks like that? I, I I want a quarterback who always the offense got the team got to run through this quarterback every single time. Now Lamar Jackson is not throwing for five touchdowns every single game. And he probably not might not even rush this year for two touchdowns a game or whatever, however you want to break it down. But I know when they get when they play in the San Francisco 49ers and it's a great game and it's week 16 and I got to win, I don't want to have no other quarterback outside of Lamar Jackson. Pat Mahomes is not really going to be throwing the ball like that all the time. They're going to be running the ball with the running backs. Um, they trying to get to the playoffs. You got to understand it's outside of just talent. These guys are trying to get healthy. They're trying to be healthy going into the fantasy, going into the real life fo uh, football playoffs. So. I want young quarterbacks who got something to prove that's going to be throwing the ball a lot when it comes to, like, fantasy. That's Jordan Love. That's not even Lamar. But when I got Lamar, I know that I I got boom potential. So I know if he, when he played the San Francisco 49ers, which was one of the toughest defense, he had his best game of the season, which was in the fantasy football playoffs, and I won with that. The reason – and he, he had struggled some games. Even though they was winning, he had struggled. But I'm okay with that because the way Lamar Jackson plays, the ball is in his hand. He don't got to have 40, 50 points every game, and I'm not looking for him to do that. But he has the, the chance to do that. Justin Herbert ain't doing that. With Stephon Diggs leaving, Josh Allen probably is not going to be doing that. Pat Mahomes is not going to be doing that. Pat Mahomes will have some games where he might throw three or four touchdowns, but that's not how they're going to be trying to win. They're going to try to run the ball. That's, they're going to be trying to save Travis Kelsey. They're going to be trying to save Pat Mahomes, win the game, and go on to the next week. Now, when they get to the playoffs, that's when they're going to turn up, and that's the real playoffs. That's not fantasy football playoffs. So I love Lamar, man. I, I love that boom potential that he has with, with, with running the ball, especially in a six-point rushing touchdown. But I understand. I respect I don't think you're wrong. Because I, I can see Lamar being a, a the top six quarterback this year. I can see guys like Jordan Love being better than him. C.J. Stroud. Uh, Neil says, let's get a draft in now. Let's go. <laughs> now, we'll get one in, bro, bro. We're going to get one in. We'll get one in. Um, Maybe I might do one later on today. Maybe, right? Um, But we're definitely doing one Sunday. Neil says, Joe Mixon makes me nervous. Uh, he makes me nervous, too. But I like him on this team where they don't need him. He's just going to get goal line opportunities here and there. He's a good, uh, what I call, dead zone running back guy where I'm stashing. 
I stash um I stash running backs like I stash girlfriends when I was in high school. I just want as many as possible to see which one is going to hit. No pun intended. Don't don't block my video, YouTube. Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler don't make me nervous at all this year because he's going late. I don't have. I'm not drafting him in the first round or the second round. So if he, if a player fall off for me in the fourth or fifth round, who cares? That's why he don't make me nervous. C C C H B says no, not Debo. Yeah, he makes me a little nervous, bro, bro. The wearing chair on his body. Appreciate you, Siobhan. Always showing support. Appreciate you, Zach. What's up, bro, bro? Cup. Siobhan says Cup makes her nervous. Cup does make me nervous. I I believe Puka Nakua is is, is taking over this team. Puka Nakua is that man. Puka Nakua could be the number one wide receiver. I said what I said. I'm not I'm not saying. Hey, I bet you I put everything on it. That could probably be one of my bold predictions. That Puka Nakua could be the number one wide receiver. He got Matthew Stafford, who's a hyper target maker king. Pause. Matthew Stafford will make you the number one wide receiver in fantasy. That's what he do. That's his special. So I believe Puka Nakua is going to take over this team. I think Cooper Cup, if he stays healthy, would be good. I believe he could be top 12, maybe a little bit outside the top 12. But I believe um, Puka Nakua, this is his team. CHB, appreciate you, bro, bro. Harami says Mahomes for fantasy purpose. I agree 100% with that. I don't believe they're going to be throwing the ball around like they usually, like they used to. I think they're going to be trying to get a little bit more tougher and play off that defense. That defense they got is good. They got some young studs on that defense. Arami says, also, Devontae, I like Devontae this year because that team is going to be good, and, and Devontae is going to get one-on-one -on, -one on the outside because they got to stop the run. I like Devontae, but I can understand why you say he makes you nervous. I understand that, and I respect that. THB says, Mahomes, I agree, 100%. Trevon says, Josh Allen, his new offense is, is threadbare. Not a lot of wide receivers to throw to who are good. I agree. But they go, they're going to be a run first team. Um, And run first is a little bit maybe that's out of context. But I believe that they're going to run the ball a lot more than they've done in the past. So I like Josh Allen um to be a good regular quarterback in the NFL, not fantasy football, Josh Allen. Aramis says, Peach forgetting about Kincaid. I love Kincaid, but Kincaid is not going to be like Josh Allen. I mean, not like Stefan Diggs, where they're going to be giving, they're going to throw the ball around 40 times a game. But what they're going to do is they're going to set it up so they can get Kincaid open. He's going to eat for a tight end. Tight, tight ends are usually like top tight end teams outside of Travis Kelsey. You usually don't have to throw the ball a lot because you usually you, you good in the run game and you just getting your guys open. Yes, I believe Kincaid is going to have a breakout season with the way they this team is going now. With, the, with them getting rid of Stephon Diggs, Kincaid, and James Cook, those guys have moved up to me. Kincaid is a top five tight end as far as I'm drafting now. Um, I ain't really broke it down. I'm drafting him over. I'm drafting Kincaid over Mark Andrews and George Kittle. I said what I said. I'm drafting him over Mark Andrews and George Kittle, not over David and Joku and Trey McBride. Or Kyle Pitts, those on my top. The young, it's young guys. It's, it's, this is a young guy season. Appreciate you, Stan Steves. Turbo Tone, what's up, bro, bro? Guys, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button. Siobhan says Keaton Mitchell, same thinking like Nick Chubb. TD, right, right. I'm not, I'm not like Keaton Mitchell. If I could get him real late and hold on to him, yeah. If I got enough bench spaces. But I'm I'm not um I'm not worried about guys that running backs that come off knee injuries. That's why I didn't draft no Breach Hall last year. Now, in a certain time of the season, I told people to trade for him, and he was a league winner down the stretch in the playoffs. This is his year now. He's came he's came off the knee injury. Now it's time to get him. Dollar Bill said, Yes, sir. Buffalo wants to win 17 to 10. There you go. Dollar Bill, no. That boy, no football. Not just because he agree with me, because he don't always agree with me, but I know he always, the way he, you know, you, he's making his point. That's what life is about. 
you don't have to agree, but you got to be able to back up something with, that makes sense. Like, okay, this is what I think because I think I saw this last year. Hey, you could be right. I want to have an educated group of subscribers and members, guys, and y'all are very educated. I don't know everything. I never have claimed to know everything, but I do think I am elite when it comes to the way I look at the football game and, and, and spotting out players. That's why I got a YouTube. I, I'm not making a YouTube just for personality. I may have a lot of personality. I may not speak the per the most perfect English, but I'm from the South, right? My my intellect is here. It's it's not it's not me writing up writing a uh some type of paper to to the news channel and I'm being an editor. That's not what I do. I'm I'm just like Ed uh Ed uh Arger, Edgeron, the coach from the um uh, LSU a couple years ago. He had a he had a crazy dialect, but he could coach. He coached Joe Burrow them to an undefeated season, best season of all time. Uh, A1, what's up? There you go. What's up, bro, bro? Appreciate you. Siobhan says, what's your thoughts on Hollywood Brown going to the Chief? I'm really digging this trade. Dude is fast and good wide receiver. How probably, uh, how probably he be a wide receiver one now? Yeah, he could be a wide receiver one, but I don't draft him as a wide receiver one. Give him as a wide receiver three and let and see what happens. I think he's good. He's a guy that you start in the flex, but I'm not drafting him like in the fourth round or anything like that. I would um, after I get a few players and stuff and get a wide receiver one, I might take uh, him uh, to be my like wide receiver three. That's why I want. Him. He's he's you no. Know, I think he'd be good for Kansas City, but I don't think he's gonna get hyper targeted. They probably gonna draft another wide receiver too, especially what's going on with Rasheed Rice. Um, so they probably gonna draft another wide receiver, and you you got to be careful. This guy could end up breaking out too. I'm surprised they ain't even cut uh, Kadarius Tony. I don't think he's gonna be there, but maybe they give him another shot. Who knows? Maybe Kadarius Tony is a good guy that's going to be good in the return game this year. I want y'all I want y'all to think about that. Kader Kadarius Tony could be good in the um with the new kickoff rules. Kazi says, I'm out on Lamar at his price. I take love and marry and lay. I agree with that. I'm not mad at that, brother. You're right. I, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't think to draft him as like a top guy and you can get guys like Lamar. I mean, like Kyler, Mary, and Love. I agree with that. I think those are the honey guys this year. Love, Mary, CJ Stroud, which he's going a little bit earlier now. But Love, Mary, I agree with that, brother. I agree with that. And redraft this year, I might not take Lamar because his, his price. Now, if you if you wait too late, I'm going to get him. But listen, I think Lamar numbers, passing numbers are going to go up too, though. But I agree with that, man. You that 100, brother. I agree with you 100% about that. That makes sense. I love Lamar, but I'm not going to be biased. I love Love and Mary Moore this year. Those are the teams that's going to be trailing in fantasy, throwing the ball up 45 times a game. Mary going to be putting the ball up in the air a lot to, to uh, Trey McBride, Maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. Love gonna be putting it up to uh Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Luke Musgrave, Tyler, uh Tyler Croft. Isaac, what's up, bro, bro? Yep, let's get the likes up, fellas. Let's get the likes up. Harami says, What round are we taking King Henry? I'm willing to go late, second round, and follow up with a wide receiver. No, nah, don't that's too early to me. Um now, listen, he's going to be good, man. He's going to be good. I, it just depends on who's off the board. I, I, that's the only thing I can tell you. I wouldn't draft him over Nico Collins. I wouldn't draft him over – I would. I wouldn't draft him over um, Devontae Adams. It's a couple players, man. It just depends on who's off your board. But I do definitely love Derrick Henry. Um, I don't think you could go wrong. I think you still he would be top five for you because I believe Derrick Henry can have 15 rushing touchdowns. Um, but teams go try, try to take him away, and Lamar gonna get some of those touchdowns too. So I love Derrick Henry, man. He's not gonna be getting 160 yards a game, but he's gonna have 110, 90, two touchdowns. He's gonna average probably about two touchdowns a game. I'm gonna tell you that now. But yeah, draft him. I, I would say more of a third round or at the turn or get him at the turn. 
Turbo Tone says, right now, the Washington offense makes me nervous. They will probably get Daniels. Hope the Patriots get him. Right. I think he, they're going to get Daniels, too. Man, you know, Daniels makes me nervous. I don't like his deep ball. He To me, he shows he, – he he throws a jump deep ball. Like, every time it, it's – like, I think Tua – I think Tua Orm is just as strong as Jaden Daniels. I hate to say that, man, but it is. Like, you know – now, if he get the ball out quick, you don't have to have a strong arm in order to be a deep, a good deep ball thrower. You just got to be able to know when to get it out. But you in college, you can wait late to throw that. In pros, it's like one, two. You got to see it now and throw it. And hopefully the safety is not over there and then baited you. So that's what that's the difference. I don't – Jaden Daniels, I don't like the deep ball. But other than that, man, I think he's a good guy. I think he can read the defense. Um, I think he's athletic. Um, I think he's a good quarterback. Yes, flex and flex, um, flex Marquise Brown. Harami says, that's what I'm saying. I think K, he gets monster TDs this year, TD. Right. He does. He does. I don't, if you want to spend a second, I don't want to spend a second. That's just me. I don't want to spend a second round on him. Um, just depends on what's on the board, man. I'd rather have Saquon Barkley and guys like that. Um, so, but I, listen, you can't, you might not go wrong with, you could like not say overdraft them, but you could take them in. Those TDs could carry you all the way to a championship. I'm not going to sit here and cap. Appreciate you, Wesley. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get ready to get out of here, guys. I got to go. My uh, son, his cousin is having a birthday party. So we got to get ready to go to the little jump, the jumpy house. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm going to try to do a live uh, later on today. Um, Maybe I do a mock draft. Um, guys, also, guys, I got a I got an um orphan team. Now the entry fee for that, which is it, it's all going, it's, it's this is a donation. Um, it's going uh to the proceeds of young um, I would call young athletics. So, but there is a prize for the league. Um, guys, it's an orphan team, a hundred dollars entry fee. If you a member, um. Uh, if you're a member of the channel, I'll knock 10% off of that. If you are a member of the channel and you want to get into that league. Um, also, guys, I give out prizes through the league. So you want to join it, you get to play against me in a private dynasty league. Watch me play, try to beat me to say, Diddy, I beat you. I you hey, I was I was better than you this year. Um CHB beat me in the league. I won four championships. Now I won it like in two or three of my other leagues. Um, I was in six championships, but I won four of them. Um CHB won a league. So, guys, make sure you join one of these leagues. It's a $100 orphan league. And also, guys, get ready for my best ball leagues. I'm going to have best ball leagues, too. So hit me up at, uh, at my fantasy good sports at Gmail if you want to join one of those listener leagues for best ball or my orphan league. Well, orphan team. Rami says, the way my league drafts, there will be wide receivers there at the 2-3 turn. Okay. And that's how you got to have that context. Like, you got to know how your league draft. You can't just go in and just do whatever you want to do. You got to pay attention to your league mates. Yes, sir, Harabi. Peace. Yep. All right, guys. Y'all be safe. I'll see y'all later. Peace. Turn me up, they don't want no smoke, I'm in my bag, bitch, I'm rolling up, they say they shit hot, hot, bitch, I'm burning up, yeah, let's talk some business, ain't no money, I ain't showing up, don't know how to act a bunch of country niggas pulling up, okay, turn me up, now they say they want that country shit, okay, now turn me up, now